Welcome back guys. Uh, today we'll be starting uh, videos on the geometry section of the GRE math. And first is lines and angles. So I wrote this incorrectly. This should be lines and angles. Okay. Uh, oh, so before we go into that, one uh, quick nugget on geometry problems on GRE is that you can expect about 30% of all questions in GRE quantitative section to be geometry based. So, so that's a big chunk. And it will be really helpful if you can get good at geometry. That said, that being said, uh, the problems on geometry don't test on any uh, big ugly theorems. Uh, you, you have to memorize very little. So, so, so don't even think about, you know, uh, like arcane, uh, Ab very abstract theorems, so very simple things um, that that are like very elementary geometry concepts, and we'll go over them uh, in this first part of lesson eight. Okay, so so first, uh, um, let's talk about a line. What's a line? So line is just in very technical terms, it's a ray uh, in the sense that it has an origination point. So what's the line? So it's, a, it's it's basically what they call a ray, meaning that it has an origination point, something like over here at this end, and then it goes into a certain direction given by this arrow. Okay, so you don't need to know this definition. You don't even need to know that a line is also technically called a ray. Anyway, so the other thing we need to know is an angle. What's an angle? Well, when you have two lines, so what can happen is that they might meet at a point, like. This. So you have to get two lines, two rays, and then there's this quantity called an angle. So, so this quantity um, you might have probably have done in your like, elementary classes where you can measure this angle using a protractor. Okay. Um, so let's say this angle is x and it's measured in degrees. Okay. One way to represent this is and, and GRE would represent this in shorthand is uh, if I want to talk about angle X in the problem I would have the small sign representing the angle and then the name of the angle which is X and maybe the degree sign okay so on GRE all angles lie between 0 and 360 so you don't have any negative angles on GRE so no negative angles on GRE. Okay. That makes life simple. All right. So that's lines and angles. Simple definitions. Uh, let's look at types of angles. Right. So first we'll look at a very special angle where Oops, let me make a straighter line. Uh, sorry, I can't get more straight than that. So where your two lines make an angle of 90 degrees. So X is 90 degrees. And this is represented by making this small square, basically, for angle. So you might have also seen uh, a name perpendicular. So these two lines are perpendicular to each other, though GRE never uses that for. Uh, so this x equals 90 is called right angle. Okay, this is the word GRE would use. The two lines make a right angle. Okay. Uh, if your angle is less than 90 degrees, so, so the way it will look is so you have your one line and you have this other line and you can clearly see this angle is less than 90. So whatever this angle x degree is, this has to be less than 90 in this case. So, so so this is known as an acute angle. Okay. Right. The third type we have is when the angle is greater than 90. So greater, this is your x degree, so it's greater than 90, but it's less than 180. And, and we'll look in a moment for 180 degree looks like 
uh, and this angle is called an obtuse angle. Okay. Uh, so a 180 degree, so if you have a two straight lines going in opposite directions like this. So this is a common origination point. Uh, so this angle, which is 180 degrees, is, is known as the straight line angle. Okay, so these are the four types of angles that you need to know for the GRE. Acute, right angle, obtuse, straight line. Simple and easy to remember. Okay. Uh, now let's look at some properties of angles. Or I'll say key facts. Okay, the first one. All angles on a straight line, this is my shorthand for straight, str dot. So on all angles on a straight line, sum to 180 degrees. And this is evident from your straight line angle that if you have a straight line, and let's say there are other lines originating on the straight line, so like this, and then you'll have angles being formed here. So let's say this is angle A, this is angle B, and this is angle C. Then all these angles, A, B, and C, so A degrees, B degrees, C degrees, they have to sum up to 180 degrees. Okay. Well, it, 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 it comes from the fact that on a straight line, the angle is 180 degrees. So if you divide into whatever number of angles, you know, you could have more than three. In this case, we only have three, but you could have any number of angles. All these angles have to sum up to 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, second point is that uh, all angles around a point sum to 160 oh 360 okay so so again let's say we have a straight line and let's make intersecting lines like this sorry these are not as straight um, and you have one common point through which all these lines pass so if you see in this case you make six angles a b c D, E, E, A, B, C, D, E, F, okay. Now, if you look at, look at, let's say this line, the horizontal line is called line L. So, on top of line L, you have three angles, A, B, C. And from key fact one, A, B, C should equal 180. And below line L, you have three angles also. And these three angles, D, E, F, they should also equal 180. So if you combine all these together, so if you add all the angles together, what you get is that all angles around this point, common intersection point, they come out to be, they sum up to be 360. Okay, so that's a common thing. If you have a point like this and you have angles all around it, they have to sum up to 360. And a good example of this is a, is a circle. So you have your circle and you have it the midpoint, the center of the circle, okay, and and let's say you have these lines drawn from the center, so these are the radii originating from the center of the circle, then you can have again angles here, so let's say these are x, y, and z. So this again is one single point, so x plus y plus z has to be 360, it goes all around the point right all these angles span around the point so these angles have to sum up to 360 degrees uh, and the key fact which um, also is slightly evident is that if you have a right angle like this okay and you divide that right angle into two smaller angles like this so you have a 
then a and b have to sum up to 90 degrees right so you, your 90 degree angle is being divided so these two should sum up to 90 degrees okay right so so, so simple facts about on top of the line angle sum up to 180 around a point 360 90 degree division makes the, the dividing angles equal to 90 degrees okay simple and straightforward facts let's do some example problems Here's the first one. In the figure below, what is the value of x if y to the x is 3 to 2? So that's a ratio given to us here. Um, so if you see here, you have a straight line and uh, you have three angles on top of that. So you have x and y and you have this 90 degree. This is a 90 degree angle. See the square? Um, so straight away, I can write one equation that x plus y plus 90 has to be 180 okay and I can simplify this by taking the 90 to the other side and I'll get that x plus y is equal to 90 degrees okay that's another another nugget of a fact that if on a straight line one angle is 90 the other angles have to sum up to 90 degrees but you don't need to memorize it uh, the other thing I know is the ratio which I can write as an equation y to x is equal to 3 to half so I have two equations here equation one is a sum and the second is the ratio Okay, the easiest way here is to set up an equation. So you want to find the value of x, which in terms of the ratio unit, x corresponds to 2, right? Okay. And the ratio you can set, the, so this is the proportion we are setting up. The proportion you set it up is against 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is sum of x and y, okay? And since the ratio is 3 to 2, uh, I know 90 corresponds to 5 units, right? So, so this is going back to a ratio and proportion thing. If when you have a, a ratio of something, you can take the sum of the units to set up as a proportion. So I know 5 units, which is the sum of 3 and 2 here, corresponds to 90 degrees, right? So here we have set, it, set up a proportion, setting up two ratios equal to each other. And we can solve easily for x. Uh, this will go 5 times 18 and x will come out to be 36 degrees, okay, which is C. Right. Uh, so th using this ratio proportion property where you find that the 5 is very, makes things very uh, efficient. The other option, the second option, which is more cumbersome, is that you solve for y, let's say in 2. So from 2, I find that y is 3 half x. Okay. Then I plug it in 1, so I'll have x plus 3 half x equals 90, and this uh, will give me 5 half x is 90, and again x would come out to be 36. So th this is slightly more, 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 more math here, more, more calculations compared to this one. Okay. All right, let's look at the next problem. What is the measure in degrees of the angle formed by the minute and hour hands of a clock at 150? Now, okay, this this getting finding the angle uh, in, in clocks is a typical standardized test question. Um, not sure if you look if you'll find this question on GRE nowadays, but but it's good to good to know how to do this question because um, it it gives good practice on the concept of angles. So, so, so let's say you have a clock that's making, uh, showing a time of 150. Uh, so let's, let's draw that clock. Okay, so I have my clock, a horizontal circle. Let's try to make a better circle. So I have, okay, this one is better. So I have my clock, I have 12, 1, 2, um, I'm not going to make, okay, let's say 3 and here 11, 10, 9. So it's showing 150. So 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 my minute hand should be exactly at 10, right? And the hour hand should be close to 2, but slightly before 2, right? So this is my showing that it's not at 2. Um, so I, I want to if if it was 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Well, then it would have been the hour hand would be exactly at 2, right? But not in this case. So so this is the angle I'm trying to find. Okay. So before I go into that, I want to think about a bit more what 
the relation between uh, angle and time so so i have my full clock here 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay now i want to think that let's say if the clock is showing one one o'clock right let me call it better so so this this time uh, so it's 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 one one o'clock my hour hand is at one minute hand is at 12 what is this angle okay so so this is basically one hour pass right and you have 12 of these around the clock so if you if you count out that you have between 12 and 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 of these uh, portions, basically. And since this is going around, it's like a circle going around. So this, is, this corresponds to 360 degrees. So what I'm trying to find is that each hour corresponds to 30 degrees. Okay. So this angle here is 30 degrees. Each hour represents 30 degrees. Okay, uh, so so 30 degrees each hour. Now I want to find what is each minute represent. So each hour represents 30 degrees. If I know 30 degrees represent 60 minutes, which is an hour, I want to find how many degrees are represented by one minute. Okay, so a simple proportion, we can set it up. Uh, and this would give us, so zero cancel zero, three times one, three times two. This gives me that each minute corresponds to half a degree. Okay, let me just make sure I did the math right there. Okay, yes. So 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 this 0.5 degree represents each minute, right? So 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 let's see what we have here. Well, we have uh, three of these hour portions, so we have 10 to 11, 10 to 12, 12 to 1. These are three complete hour portions, and we know each of these are 30 degrees. So 3 times 30 degrees, but then we need to more between 1 and 2. So this is not a complete 30 degrees, it's, it's only proportional to, instead of going 60 degrees for the whole hour, we have only gone 50 degrees, right? So we need to take this 50 minutes and times it by half for each minute okay so this will give me 90 plus 25 equals 115 all right so again repeating what we did over here uh, we found what how many degrees each hour represent uh, on a clock okay so we found that this this angle basically represents 30 degrees right between each hour so we have three of these here one two three so we got three times 30 and then we want to find between one and two how much the hour hand has moved since it's not two o'clock completely it's only 50 minutes past one so we want to find 50 minutes how many 50 minutes correspond we found that each minute corresponds to 0.5 degrees so now we took this 0.5 degrees and times it by 50 minutes and in all we got 115 